if, if you go back to the overall picture, AI is this big circle, and machine learning is a small circle within the AI circle, right? Which is of learning from examples, because there's a lot of other stuff in AI that's nothing to do with machine learning. Uh, now, machine learning in turn had a bit of a, a limitation, which was that it worked really well, but only when the input data was structured. And by that I mean the data was in the columns and rows of a spreadsheet, for example. Uh, in that situation, it was really good, but if the input data was unstructured, such as if the input data is images or video or audio or ECG or x-rays and so on, it wasn't very good at you know, going from that to a predicted output. Typically, the peop what people would have to do is to, they would actually manually take that unstructured data and structure it. Uh, and this process is often called feature engineering or feature extraction. A human expert would look at an image and say, okay, so let's go back to the fun dog and cat example. The human might say, you know what, if it has whiskers, it's probably a cat. If it doesn't have whiskers, it's probably a dog. So I'm gonna take each picture. I'm just gonna figure out if it has whiskers or not. I'm just gonna write that down. So now instead of having a whole bunch of pictures and a label saying dog or a cat, now you have a single column which says whiskers, no whiskers, and the output is cat, and that can be fed into machine learning, and it'll do a great job with that data. So the problem is manual pre-processing to structure the unstructured data was sort of where things were, and then deep learning happened. Um, this was 2010, roughly, circa 2010, and deep learning is basically gives you the ability to directly work with unstructured data without a human having to pre-process it for you upfront. So this meant that any sort of problem in which the input data was unstructured, images, video, text, audio, and so on and so forth, now became fair game for machine learning. So just to step back for a moment, we have the big AI circle, the machine learning circle inside of it, and then within the machine learning circle, there is a deep learning circle. Um, and you know, I, in the interest of time, I won't go into you know, what exactly is going on with deep learning, except to just point out maybe just one thing, which is that it uses actually an old technology called neural networks, which is part of the toolkit of machine learning algorithms, except that neural networks, which are really big, meaning they have lots and lots of layers, very big neural networks, or, or sort of the workhorse of deep learning, and the fact that big networks are really powerful has been known for a long time. But the new news with deep learning is that now we can actually train these neural networks, these large networks really well, because we have a lot of data due to the digitization of everything, number one. Number two, we have very powerful parallel processing hardware called graphics processing units, which were originally invented for video games and then sort of repurposed for this. And then finally, algorithmic and math improvements. So these three forces were like the perfect storm that came together and suddenly made large neural networks viable. And of course, deep learning sounds a lot cooler than large neural networks, and hence the term has really sort of been widely adopted and just taken off. So that's deep learning, and it's a circle within machine learning. And then I'm almost done. Finally, uh, within deep learning, uh, now the question becomes, well, we can handle unstructured inputs, but can we generate unstructured outputs is the next question. As opposed to simply saying dog, cat, can we actually generate a picture of a dog, right? Can we actually create human sounding text? Can we actually create uh, like a 3D model of something? Can we create unstructured data? And generative AI is the final breakthrough, which actually helps us not just process unstructured data, but to create unstructured data, such as images and audio and so on and so forth. And therefore, Gen AI is the small circle inside the deep learning circle. And within Gen AI, there are these large language models, which go from text inputs to text inputs, chat GPT being the most famous example. And then there are uh, text-to-image models, uh, DALI and stable diffusion being examples, and those are all small circles within the Gen AI circle. So, so the overall landscape is AI, machine learning, deep learning, generative AI, large language models, and then as a peer to large language models, text-to-image models and so on. That's basically the overall landscape, but when people talk to you about AI these days, they're basically referring to the innermost circles typically. Uh, but they're doing it obviously casually and colloquially, but that's sort of the overall landscape.